Hi and welcome to this chapter in which we are going to look at how to work with the Bastion host. So the Bastion host, remember, is used as a security measure to administer the instances in your private subnet. So instead of putting your instances in a public subnet and administering them from, you know, a, a workstation on your on-premise location, you can actually place those instances in a private subnet, keep a Bastion host in your public subnet, ensure the Bastion host can communicate with the private server, and ensure that the Bastion host has an inbound security rule to the workstation for where you're going to connect. So we're going to do that right now. So we're first going to launch an instance in our private subnet. So let's choose our Ubuntu server, which we've been using all this time. Let's keep it as micro. Now next when we configure the instance details, we'll put this in our demo VPC. We'll ensure this is put in our private submit. Remember this is, we're going to administer the server from a bastion host put in our public subnet. Next, we're going to go to add storage. We're going to leave the storage as it is. We'll add a tag. So we'll just keep this as private server. Now, we're going to create a new security group for this. Uh, I'll name it as private server and for the moment I'm not going to put any rules for the server we'll actually change the rules later on let's go to a review and launch let's acknowledge that we have the keeper and launch the instance now next let's go ahead and launch our bastion host so the bastion host is any uh, AMI or any host that you want remember it's just used for connecting to the servers in your private subnet so let's, so let's choose the Ubuntu server. Again, we can keep it as TDO or micro. Next, when we configure the instance details, let's choose our demo VPC. This time, remember, let's choose the public subnet. Let's again go to next to add storage. Let's leave the storage as it is. Let's next to add tags and let's add this as our bastion host. Let's click on next to configure the security group. Now I'm going to create a new security group for this. So I'm going to name this as Bastion. And this I'm going to keep the SSH protocol is open. So we're going to uh, log into the server. And then from here, we're going to actually log into the server in our private subnet. So let's click on review and launch. And finally, let's click on launch. Let's acknowledge we have the key pair and launch our instances. So let's now go back to view instances. So we have two instances being spun up. So one is our private server. The private server is hosted in our private subnet and our bastion host through which we are going to administer our private server is in our public subnet. So now let's wait for the bastion host to get up and running. Then let's SSH into the bastion host. So I'll come back when both the servers are up and running. So now both my servers are up and running. Now what I've done is that I've actually connected to the bastion host. So if I go to the bastion host, it has a public IP of 13.229.60.104. So I've actually connected via putty to this IP address. This is the internal IP address. So 10 dot zero dot two dot ninety one this is the internal IP address of the bastion host now from the bastion host I am actually going to connect to the private server and then do whatever administration needs to be done on this private server now we need to ensure that the SSH incoming rule is added to the security group for the private server remember we had not done this uh, during the creation of the instance and that's because I want to only specifically add the rule for this bastion host server. So let's make a note of this IP 10.0.2.91. So we're going to say that the private server can only be logged in from the bastion host. That's it. So let's go to our private server. Let's go to the private server security group. In the inbound section, we're going to edit and add the SSH protocol. And over here, we're going to enter the custom IP address. So remember, that was 
91 and we can choose 32 so that will be the network mask and we are saying that we only want connections from the bastion host we'll click on save so now we've got the security group configured let's go to our ec2 dashboard let's go to our running instances let's now see the private ip address of the private server so it's 10.0.3.72 so now we are in the bastion host and we need to connect to the private server so let's ssh into the private server i've already copied the aws demo.pem file onto the bastion host please do so yourself right so now we are able to connect from the bastion host to the private server now before i exit from this chapter there are two main points i want to showcase so the first is the security group of the bastion host so let's go back to our bastion host let's go to our security group so always ensure the source is from your IP address which is in your on-premise environment so where you're connecting to the bastion host form don't keep the source has everywhere so for example if I put my IP so this is the IP of my workstation the current IP and AWS would obviously allocate a network mask of slash 32 so this is very important even from an exam perspective to understand that the security group for the bastion host should be from a single source IP address. This is a best security practice. This is one thing. The second thing has to do with troubleshooting connecting to an EC2 instance. So I said I copy the AWS demo.pem file onto the bastion host server. So there's one more thing I had done on the pem file. I had changed the permissions. So let me first change the permissions back to what it was. Right, so now let me try to connect with the AWS demo.pem file onto our private server. And now you will see you will get the error of saying that the permissions are just to open. So you need to remember that you need to change the permissions using chmod 400. And once you've done that, you can connect using the private key file. So this is just another point I wanted to add. It's good for you to know. When you're troubleshooting connecting to an EC2 instance. But this marks the end of this chapter on Bastion Hosts. Let's move on to the next.